right. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I just wanted to kind of uh, address the topic for today, and I, um, you know, I thought about like, what, there's so many things you could talk about, right? Oh, just to get ready for Ramadan. And I think you're going to hear, if you're in this community or any community, you'll hear from this point forward maybe khutbahs and talks. There's stuff online. A lot of people are gearing up, right? Because the month is right around the corner. So there's a lot of great advice already that's going to be given to you, inshallah, and hopefully that will help you. But I kind of was thinking, what's a, a way that we can, you know, kind of keep things in perspective, not just for Ramadan, but also just starting now, right? It's pre-Ramadan, but and beyond. Um, so what what are some advices or some things that we can discuss? So I came up with sort of. Um, uh, an acronym which I'll share with you, but before I jump in, how many people know the word ilm? What does the word ilm mean in Arabic? Ilm. Ilm. Knowledge. Very good. So ilm is knowledge, right? Um, and Ella, would you mind, I'm so sorry, while I read, could you please help me on the board? Okay, if you can write, because the acronym, I want to kind of just write it for you so then we can refer to it. So, um, right, perfect. So if we can do I and then maybe an L well, underneath it, that? yes. Oh. So we're going to use L because I want it to stick, right? So get that sticky factor so you just remember it. So um, I thought, you know, let's break this word down. Obviously we know knowledge, right? And that's um, all of us, whether we're new Muslims or people born into the space, this is part of our journey that we're constantly striving to learn and that we're in the pursuit of knowledge, right? That's what we... Uh, we should strive for every day, wherever we are in our journey. So that's why I thought this was an appropriate, and it's quick, right? So it's, it's, it's something hopefully we can, we can remember. So the first um, point I wanted to talk about was the I. And so the word that I used for I was intention. Okay? Intention. Every day it's so critical that all of us, and this is part of the, the path, again, no matter where you are, new or been on it for a while, that you start your day with knee, with intention, and that you really think about that. And that can happen um, if you're lying in bed, you know, before your fudger alarm goes off, or after it goes off and you're waiting for ten, you know, the snooze to come back, and you're just thinking. But to really have that um, moment of reflection where you think about what you want from your day, right? What what is the day ahead of you going to look like? Because this is for all of us. It's a journey that we're on, but every day we have to take it day by day, right? For some of us, as we said, mashallah, that iman fluctuates, right? Some of us, we're going to wake up and we're going to have those days where we're going to just, we feel so much um, just, you know, uh, inspiration to do things, you know? Or there might be uh, something to look forward to. Maybe there's an event, like right now, that we're all looking forward to Ramadan. So naturally those feelings are there and, you know, we want to learn, we want to get ourselves straight, right? So that's kind of, you know, part of the process that you're going to have days like that where you wake up with that kind of, you know, strong resolve. And then there's other days where, yes, you're going to struggle. And to remember that, that this is perfectly normal. And I, I remember when I was uh, studying, the, um, you know, our teacher, he, he used the analogy of a staircase, you know, that steps. You're going to have moments where you rise and then moments where you kind of just plateau. Moments where you rise, moments where you plateau. And as long as you're in this upward sort of moment or movement, don't push yourself. Like, and I think it's very natural, even myself, you know, I, I shared with you that I, I, I wore hijab after two weeks. And I realized after I did it, and because I'm so stubborn, I didn't want people to go see, we told you so, you wore it, you know, you're going to take it off. I, I, for that reason, I kept it on, but I struggled with hijab for a while because I realized it was way too fast, you know. So if anybody in the room, you know, has been through that where people are pressuring you to do things at a, at a pace where you're not ready, you have to pace yourself because the intention matters more than the outward, right? We can all put on the costume, right, of being super Muslim. We can all look the part. We can walk into the masjid and, you know, look like we're, we've been here all day. But if in the heart there's, um, you know, a disconnect and we're not feeling it, then that doesn't, none of this is going to matter. So the most important thing, and that's why, you know, in amalu bin niyati, this is one of the most widespread and well-known hadith. It's one of, you know, the first hadith of of Imam al Nawawi's uh, collection, and you know, there's different kind of collections of hadith, but the mo you know, this is a very popular text that many people study. But it's one of the first things, even little children, they teach the importance of intention. So for us to really think about that, so I really recommend um, 
Does anybody know what a wird is? The word wird, and I'm sorry, would you write this down also? Yeah. So a wird is the Arabic word for a litany. And so those of you from the Catholic tradition or from Christian traditions, litanies, you know, are formulaic prayers. And so, you know, you might have a rosary that you, a certain sort of formula of prayers that you do, right, or that you knew as a child. So they teach this, you know, in, in Sunday school or, or, you know, in church. They also teach it in synagogues and mosques, but this idea that you should have something that you commit to as a, as, a, as a prayer that you do every day. So in Islam, there are litanies available to you. And there, a lot of our scholars recommend us doing them every single day. What these litanies do is they help you with the intention. Because all of the things that you want from your day are covered. They're all from the sunnah. So all of the, the prayers and the litanies are actual du'as that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. But what these scholars throughout history did, and you'll have different scholars throughout history have their own uh, litanies, right? Um, so what they did is they looked at the different du'as, whether it's when you wake up, you know, when you go to the bathroom, when you put on your clothes, when you look at yourself in the mirror, when you dress. Because mashallah, pretty much every part of our day, there's a du'a for it, right? And so what they did is said, well, let's, you know, create these this formula where it's just, you know, concise, it's something easily, easy, you know, to, to memorize. And then they, you know, put it in the text, and alhamdulillah, we have access to that. So there are litanies that you can do that take about 10 to 15 minutes a day, and our scholars recommend that you start your day with them. So after you pray your Fajr prayer, sitting on the prayer mat, or just, you know, like for me in my household, we actually play, um, there's an audio version of it, so I'll just play it when I'm making breakfast. I have my eggs, scrambled eggs, you know, coffee, but the whole house is, you know, we have, if you have the, you know, Alexa or any of those speaker systems in your house that kind of can, how I many that's nice, everybody's listening to it at the same time, what do the du'as cover? They cover your day. So there's du'as for protection from um, everything from stress, anxiety, from um, any type of danger, um, from, uh, you know, uh, things that we don't really think about that we should, debt, right? Is debt not one of the biggest stressors of our life? So imagine every single day, you start your day by asking Allah SWT to protect me from debt it, without really thinking about it, right? Because it's a, something that you're just doing, uh, you're memorizing it, of course you can read it in English and get the meaning of it, but it's sort of like, I, I'm, I'm checking it off my list of worries that I might, you know, think about or might, you know, later it might affect me in my life. Health, asking Allah to protect your health or the, to protect your children, your family, your extended family. And then asking Him for the good of the day and protecting you from whatever evil or dangers are out there. So all of these are covered in these litanies. You get it done, 10-15 minutes, boom, you go to work, you go to school, you go take care of your mom, you go shopping, you leave your home, but what have you just done? You've created, like, I kind of like to imagine things, so I, I kind of imagine like there's this force field, this, you know, bubble that I've just sort of protected myself with, you know, spiritual bubble that when I walk out the door, I now feel better. I feel just, I have solace. And my kids now, alhamdulillah, they're six and nine, but they, you know, they understand that this is a part of our routine. So if we, and it's happened before where I'm rushing out and I forget, and they go, mom, we didn't do the whip, you know, the, you know, the litty. So I'll go, well, alhamdulillah, it's on YouTube, play it in the car. So there we go on our drive, wherever we're going. But what I love about it again is it, what recenters you to your intention? I'm starting my day knowing my purpose, knowing that, um, Allah's given me life, you know, and that's why the first dua that you make when you open your eyes is what? Gratitude, that you lived through the night, right? Because it's like, wow, you know, the, there's a hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said that sleep is the little brother of death, right? Every night when we sleep, um, it's like, it's, it, there is a, you know, a, it's almost like we're visiting, in a way, death, because there's this period of time where we're doing nothing, right? We're completely... Uh, you know, incapacitated in a way, um, but then Allah revives us, He gives our soul life again, so we wake up, boom, it's another opportunity to worship Him, another opportunity to serve Him, another opportunity to spread light, so being so grateful for that, but then at the same time, you know, um, making sure that you're protected, so that's why, you know, the intention is so important. Anybody have any uh, questions about that? Or and we can I can give you the actual sources on YouTube uh, how to find these prayers. There's PDF files where you can um, print it. It's very easily accessible. I mean, there's books too you can buy, but if you want it, everything's alhamdulillah now available online, free, boom, print, and then the YouTube videos. Yes, I'm cool. Welcome.
Thank you. So I know I've heard that there's a, a with a prayer at nighttime. Yes. So is that? I mean, it's different. Okay. Yeah, with it is a, is a, also it's a, it's a special type prayer that you do at night. Uh, but this is the wird. Wird is just the Arabic word for litany. So that's completely different. But and this is you'll see it. When if uh, I wish I had brought my other bag, but I actually have it. Where it's just a it's like a list of, of different duas that you say, and then there's t like you say it uh, you know different amounts. So some of them you say three times, four times, seven times, but you just keep repeating it, and then you're done in about 10-15 minutes. But the meanings are all there, and it's it's really actually, um, and actually maybe after the event I can you know pull it up for you just for you to visualize it and see it, and you'll see the meanings and how they just make they're so they're dwells for protection. So it's like wow, I wouldn't even think of praying this for myself, and you know Alhamdulillah, it's all there, and all I have to do is repeat it, and it's like it makes it all so easy instead of struggling to think about you know, all the things that could happen to you and all the things that you're, you know, the worries and stresses of life, it's all done for you. And you just repeat it, walk out, like I said, and you're you're clear. So yeah, I'll provide more details, inshallah. Okay, thank you. Is there uh, a specific one you recommend? Yes, the yes, the one that uh, we, most of our scholars recommend, which is easy and it's easy to find, especially online, is called Al-Wird Al-Latif. And um, this is by Imam Al-Haddad. And you can actually find it on YouTube. You can find it um, the uh, the uh, PDF files, like I said, which are easy to print. I can send those as well. Uh, the, the the link for you guys. But again, this just makes it um, so easy to to uh, to center yourself. And then also, as I said before, about intention. When you really get this key concept down, you realize that the outward isn't as important as the inward, right? The outward form is not as important as the inward reality. <clears throat> Sometimes we can get caught up with the outward form yeah. of things and we forget for ourselves and for other people. It just, it, as, and I know this from you know experience with, with working with, with, uh, with converts is that, and even myself honestly, that it can get disheartening because you have a lot of high expectations, right? You think like, you know, this faith is so beautiful and I love it, I'm so in love with everything and it's so amazing. And then you see Muslims behaving in a way where you're like, what? Right? And it's like, how does that make any sense? It can get disheartening. But when you realize that, you know, that don't don't get caught up with the form, don't get caught up with names, don't get caught up with, oh, they've been Muslim for so long, or they wear hijab, or they have a beard down this no. We're all struggling. Every single one of us. And we're struggling at varying degrees. Um, so when you really realize this, like I said, it helps you, so don't get caught up with this and work on it, work on the inside. And I'll just share a quick story just to let you like kind of you know explain how this really came for me um, and kind of hit me this lesson. You know, I was practicing for a while and I was all about form. I used to wear like, you know, it was, I, it was, Islam at that time was uh, was very um, much about how you looked, you know, so not only did you have to wear hijab, but you had to wear it correctly. And then you had to wear, you know, it was very, um, I don't know, it was just a different message then about looking very Muslim. So I used to walk around all black. Like I would wear, you know, jibab and hijab and I would have no makeup on. I was just like, you know, like, <laughs> no and I, nothing, no smile. No, actually, intentionally, I would not smile. I'm not kidding. And I had friends who would be like, Osai, why do you walk around like this? Because I was on college campus and I'm just like, and I would say, you know, I said, because I want the far to know I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's how I used to walk around with that kind of energy. Can you imagine how, how un-Islamic that really is when you start to understand? But I just thought that was, it was a very yeah, interesting way of uh, practicing back then. So I used to walk around like that and I used to judge people all the time for how they weren't dressed the way that I thought they should dress. And I'm someone, you know, Again, I was I thought I was on the right path and I thought this is what Islam is. One day I was at Oakland Airport and I share this story just to show you again how this hit me. I was at Oakland Airport and I was waiting for a ride. This car pulls up and this lady walks out. She's like, you know, typical white American, you know, woman and she's wearing like a tank top and shorts, like short shorts. And of course I'm sitting there in my all my gear to the bed, and I'm just like you know, I've got like daggers coming out of my eyes towards this lady, you know, I'm like, look at her, look how she's dressed, like, what is this, it's ridiculous, you know, I have all these terrible thoughts in my mind, and I swear to you this happens, she, um, cause she's, she's in her, you know, she has a trunk open and she's moving stuff in her car, this is where all these thoughts are coming, she sees me, 
and she like looks right at me and I was like, oh dang, you know, like, are my thoughts out of my head? Like, are they, you know, is she hearing my thoughts? Like, it just felt very awkward to see this woman that I'm thinking about all these terrible things looking at me because there's, it's a hus you know, bustling airport, a lot of people, you know, a lot of traffic. But she looks right at me and then she closes her trunk and she walks like directly towards me. And I was like, oh my God, like my heart beat with a boom, 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 like what is going to happen now? And she, this, this is what comes out of her mouth. Assalamu yeah. alaikum. And she's like, I know I don't look like a Muslim. I'm actually really embarrassed the way that I look right now. I converted to Islam and she starts telling me her story and she's just like so humble, so timid and just really feeling, you know, shy. But she's like, I felt compelled to talk to you because, you know, I'm, I'm raising my, my son Muslim and I don't have any information. I, I, I saw you and I thought it was like a sign from God that maybe I should come talk to you and ask you for books, like references for books. And you can imagine what's going on inside of me, right? So this is what I call, you know, those, you know, life-changing moments. Absolutely. Like, I felt like I just got hit in the face because from the outward, just looking at, examining the two, you know, people would assume a lot of things about me and assume a lot of things about her, but the realities were so far, right? Here's she's someone who's seeking, who's humble, who's coming with that soft, gentle heart, and here I am on my high horse thinking I was something, you know. So it, it really did wake me up and that was a turning point for me to realize like all these years like you've been worrying about this, this, this. So that's why this intention matters so much because if it's all for naught, you know, if it's all for, means nothing if it's not done with the right intention. So we have to remember that every day, every single day. So we started with Elam. The next one, uh, L, and we're just doing an acronym to kind of again help us, you know, take, uh, you know, have a takeaway from this session so that we can apply it starting today and then onward, inshallah, into Ramadan. The next one stands for lead. Okay. Um, you know, in the Quran, uh, in the Surah Baqarah, verse thirty, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, there's a beautiful exchange that happens between Allah and the angels when He, you know, decides to tell them that He's created, um, you know. Adam and he, he says uh, here So he says that Muhammad when your Lord said to the angels indeed I will make upon the earth a successive authority and they said, will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood while we declare your praise and sanctify you? Allah said, indeed, I know that which you do not know. I love this ayah because it is such a beautiful confirmation of our potential, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming for us that we have the capacity, we have the cap capability to surpass even the angels, right? He's telling them because they're like, we worship you, we do nothing wrong. And you're gonna put this human that's gonna do all of this and, and claim him as, you know, your vicegerent or your, you know, the successive authority. Like, and he says what? I know that which you do not know. So this should build our confidence that no matter how many times you fall, it's okay. This is not about perfection. Okay, Allah Subh'ala doesn't expect perfection from any of us. He expects us to strive and to keep returning. And that's why there's so many beautiful hadith that remind us that if Allah wanted to make all of us perfect, He would. But He loves who, be it more than the perfect worshiper, He loves the returning sinner. The one who acknowledges his or her shortcomings but keeps coming back, keeps coming back. And so this is again, you know, this just a beautiful way to look at yourself and to remind yourself that you were created with this intention to be something great and to not let negative thoughts, negative people ever break you down or comparisons. Comparisons is something across the board all human beings have a problem with. Um, but I think even spiritually it can be a problem if you feel 
like, oh, I've been Muslim for this long and I'm not where so-and-so is, or I haven't made Hajj, or I haven't, I don't wear hijab, I don't do this enough, I'm not good enough. These are all waswasa. Waswasa are whisperings from shaitan, right? Negative ruminations. If you ever have like a, thoughts that just keep coming and coming and they're negative and they're meant to break you down, be certain this is from shaitan. Especially for many of you who are alone on this journey and who don't have that support system. Hopefully that problem will be resolved with groups like this, inshallah. That's our intention. But in the meantime, if you ever have that thought like, I'm not good enough, or I'm not doing enough, and I'm a loser, and what's the purpose, and these are all, all from shaitan. That's why you have to remember this ayah, and remember the purpose and the intention and the beautiful confidence that, that our Lord has in who we are, right? And then, you know, the Prophet he also, he says, you know, Indeed, I was sent as a teacher, and he's our example. Right? And so you mentioned you, you taught English, right? Anybody else taught anything, whether it was in church, Sunday school, you taught, right? You taught? Yeah. Isn't it, Matt? Yeah. Isn't it amazing? I mean, I, I'm a teacher by profession, too. But isn't it, to me, I think the best way to learn something is to teach it, right? Yeah. It will absolutely stick, right? So we have to see ourselves as teachers, too. So I love, you know, that you were saying when you learn something, you teach it to other people. This is reinforcing. It's so important not to let your um, newness into the faith intimidate you from teaching and from being an advocate of the faith. A lot of times new converts feel like, who am I? I don't know Arabic. I don't know this. I don't know that. And I have to deal with, I, I, I hear this a lot, even with people who are, who've been Muslim for a long time. There's this, um, you know, notion that you can only teach something if you have attained this level of knowledge or scholarship. And that's not true. You know, there's hadith where, you know, the Prophet said, even if you have a, know an ayah, you should teach it. A small, short verse. So whatever you know, teach it because it reinforces it for you. So embodying this identity of Allah created me to be something great. Allah created me to teach. This will also help all of us on our journey to reinforce everything that we learned and not let, again, those negative thoughts break us down and make us feel inferior or we're not capable. Okay? Any questions about this point? Yes. So the L stands for lead? Yes, to so lead. how are we leading? To be teaching, to be leading by example, right? So you either teach or you lead by example. Whatever you learn, when you apply it, you can, you know, teach it. You can, that's, people will learn from you. And it's not just about the outward, even greeting people. Like when you walk into a room, you know, and you greet people with that beautiful smile and you're warm and you're welcoming and you, you know, offer people. This is all our faith. It's all putting our faith into practice. It's all leading by example. These are small things, right, that you can do. Um, and then, you know, other things, of course, if you learn knowledge, if you have any knowledge, use your platform. Social media, for example, you know, I, in, you know, Alhamdulillah, people use it for different things. Some people are on there, yes, to, to learn, to teach. Some people are on there to share with family and friends, to promote their businesses. Whatever it is, your intention matters. But I always feel like if you really want to benefit from social media, learn and then teach. So use your platform to share beneficial things. And you know, uh, I, you know, you see it all the time. You taking a picture of of your meal. <laughs> at a restaurant is great, yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to you know, share with people, oh, look at the delicious meal I had. But what if you were reading a book at that restaurant and you saw a quote that was really powerful and it's like, ooh. So that, people don't take a picture of the quote, right? And so you kind of look at it like, I always see Islam as, like as, a, as a medicine, right? That I am so fortunate, we're all so fortunate that Allah help us, you know, He helped us find this treasure trove of medicine that just heals, right? So for me, it's like, I, I want to share because I feel like there's so many people out there who are, who are hurting, who are, you know, they need it, they need it. So any opportunity to give them medicine, to, and it doesn't have to be with scripture, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to yes, say please. that comment because I think sometimes, especially for us when we do, because we don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't quote you anything on the Quran. Like, mm -hmm. like I can't say, oh, this ayah, this, because right. I have no idea. You're still learning, You're yeah. You're still learning, but I think for us, it could just be like at work, maybe a co-worker has asked me, why do you do this? Or how come you come here this way? 
just put it back to Allah. Well, I do that because in Islam we're taught da 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 da. So they exactly. always know everything is connected. Now the bad stuff that I do, <laughs> I'll be like, no, that's me. But the good stuff, that's from Allah. So then we can't necessarily give them scriptures, like you're right. saying. But our behavior, especially because we're new, then they'd be like, wow, you just took this shot. Hey, you come in here like this. Maybe I need to take my shot. <laughs> you know, like exactly. We could just do it with our actions. Which Absolutely. I think that's what Prophet Muhammad so is like. Yes. That's what he did too. Like, he, yeah, he had the scripture, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think his, the way that he is, like, it described how he was, how he treated people. Yes. That also softened people's hearts towards well, of course. the deen. So we can do the same thing without knowing. This is Aya, Sura, this is as I Exactly. Have, um, Those are limiting thoughts, yeah. right? Those are limiting beliefs that I have to only teach if it's, I have the proofs and I have everything memorized and I can say it in Arabic. No, that's, the, don't, Shaitan, the thing is, a lot of people think Shaitan only inspires to evil. That's not true. He will thwart good. Yeah, with other things. So it's like, oh, you know, so, so it's not necessarily he's only going to direct you to sin. He'll just, he could thwart you from good behavior by these limiting thoughts. So that's why you have to be able to identify, no, nope, that's a limiting thought. I'm not going to do that because like you said, you know, I'm, I'm now able to just, you know, share whatever I can that's beneficial that I know benefits me and I don't need to constantly, you know, um, confine myself to these strict rules. No, be free. Teach and you'll see the benefits of that, inshallah. Yeah. To add on to that point, I think Ramadan also opens that up to other people because yes. they have, that's the best time because they ask you all kinds of questions. So true. Know? So, so for me, some of my best moments have been when I have customer meetings and we have lunch and learns and you know and I'm not eating. And they're like, well, why? And then, and then after the meeting, they have like another hour discussion, right? And so just, they just kind of go back and forth, and they kind of tell me their experience with with Islam. When they, you know, I've had a lot of customers that worked in Dubai and a lot of those areas, mm -hmm. so they so they know and understand. That. So they understand that. So and that you know, it, it's good to know that Islam expands to all walks of life and. And everyone can relate to some at some point in time in their life with, with their song. That is such a good point. I'm so glad you brought that up because I'm realizing it's so true how um, Allah kind of facilitates these discussions during the month, right? And you do too. I mean, even myself, I feel like we're so much more proud you know, and loud about our Islam and Ramadan because it's like, it's Ramadan, you know, and, and people, whereas people are usually shy, like, oh, I gotta pray, I have to find a conference room, I do this, but then it's like, when it's Ramadan, it's like, yeah, I can't fast. Sorry, you know, I can't eat that. And you know, people are like, they don't really think about it, right? And it's similar to, I guess, you know, how in the, you know, um, in Christian faith, I, you also see an uptick from Thanksgiving to Christmas and people being very proud of their Christianity, right? Even if they're not going to church every day. But there's just something about the season that kind of gives people all those good feels and then they spread that out there. So that's a great perspective because it's a great opportunity to, again, work on that sense of ownership, right, of your identity and establishing yourself in your circles with your friends and coworkers, but with that sort of added boost, you know, that Ramadan naturally kind of gives. So thank you, thank you for sharing. That was a really good reminder of that for all of us. Mashallah. So the last uh, letter here stands for mastery, okay? Um, and this is obviously the hardest part uh, of the journey because it's the continuous polishing, right, of what's in here, of this heart that extends to the limbs. And this is a lifelong process. Every single one of us, um, you know, are, have to do this, no matter, again, where we started. If we started five years ago, uh, three months ago, 10, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, it doesn't matter. This part of the process never ends until we are in the grave. It's an everyday, um, upward sometimes battle, right? And it takes persistence, it takes dedication. Um, and so, and if you think about it, it's the most important because it proves our sincerity, right? How do you prove sincerity in anything? You know, in a relationship, for example, if I'm in a relationship with you and I tell you I love you, and you mean everything to me, but then I disappear. Um, and I don't, you don't hear from me for months and weeks at a time. How is my sincerity, you know, is my sincerity proven to you? Or the opposite, right? So, you know, in anything, even at work, you know, if I, if I uh, you know, 
say to my employer, you can count on me, <laughs> but I'm calling in sick or I'm, you know, scrolling on my phone when I'm supposed to be at a meeting, right? Chances are I'm probably not going to have my picture, you know, I'm not going to get a plaque you know, at the end of the month. I'm probably going to get a pink slip, right? Because your sincerity is proven with what? Deliberate, constant, continuous action. So that's what we have to constantly remind ourselves that this is something that you're not going to reach like this peak and then be like, ah, oh, I've arrived, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm finally like all these other people who I see are like what I think are super Muslim. No, no, no. There's, you know, there's plenty, that's why there's plenty of hadith that show, um, you know, the downfall of people who are really high because something went wrong. Maybe they, you know, got spiritually a little too, you know, uh, ahead of themselves and they thought like, oh, I don't have to work on this. No, this is an everyday process, this constant polishing, right? And so, um, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, and how do we do this? So the practice of how do we, you know, get, you know, improve or work on this mastery is ihsan. Do we know this word, ihsan? Excellence. Very good. You supposed to live, or we like uh, Allah, like we can see Allah. Yes. But we can't, but then, but we know He can see he us. He can see us exactly. So from the Hadith of Jibril, there's this is also from Imam Al Nawawi's forty Hadith. There's a beautiful exchange that talks about Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. This is where we get this definition of Ihsan. Ihsan is spiritual excellence, right? It's really putting in our best effort in whatever we do. And so really understanding that if you want to achieve mastery over anything, instead of trying to do it all, focus on specific things, get mastery of it, then go to the next, right? So whatever that is, if right now you're in a place where you're like, my prayers, I'm not where I want to be. Um, maybe I'm not praying on time, maybe um, I want to work on my uh, Arabic or, uh, you know, just whatever, you know, or I'm not doing all five. Maybe I, I, I get really tired at a certain point or I'm missing one I continuously. This is normal. All of us have been on this journey. Every single person here has been in this. But how do you focus on perfecting your prayer if you're also trying to do X, Y, Z, or A, B, C, D, and you're, you're trying to do too much? So pacing yourself and not thinking that it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet and I have to hit every single, you know, uh, station. Islam is beautiful and there's a lot to offer, but you don't have to hit every station, okay? Pace yourself and just get really, like, you know, focus on the, the main course, right? Um, and, and, and work on those things important. And of course, we know prayer is, is the most, right, important. So if that's something that you're struggling with, work on prayer. And then if it's... You know, uh, something else, maybe you want to learn Tajweed, right, which is the, the correct pronunciation of the Qur'an. Maybe you want to start learning how to read Arabic. This can be your next project, right? But I think the pressure of trying to do too much can, can, can be very overwhelming. And this is how, again, Shaitan can prevent us from really advancing because, like anything, you know, whether you're uh, dieting or trying to, you know, create, you know, some new other habits, whatever it is, if you overwhelm yourself, trying to do too much, you're going to stop. It's going to maybe after a week, you're going to be like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Whereas if you say, you know what, I want to really understand this concept of Ihsan and really, um, you know, just, just you know, uh, be really good at something so that, alhamdulillah, I can feel pride in that thing. Even if it's one or two things, if it's something meaningful to me and Allah's facilitated it for me, I want to get just really good at that and inshallah, be continuous and be, you know, and just improve in that. And that's why the Prophet said, he said, Allah uh, kataba al ihsanu ala kulli shay, that he um, he prescribed ihsan in all things. So we're not just talking about worship, right? You should we should as Muslims try to do everything we can with this concept of doing it excellently. And there's another there's a principle, for example, if you come into a space or or if you use something that you leave it better than how you found it. So I like to use the analogy of like a public bathroom, okay? <laughs> you walk into sometimes some of these bathrooms and you're like, oh my God, right? Who took a shower here, right? It's like the wudu station is just like... <laughs> 
soaking wet, paper towels everywhere, the stalls are disgusting. And you know, I'm sure we've all done it before where it's like you walk into one stall, ugh, move on to that, ugh, ugh, and then you're like, ah, I can't use the restroom. But um, if you get to that place where you're like, you know what, who's going to make the change? Who's going to make the change? You know, maybe the person who cleans the bathrooms is gone for the night, but maybe yeah, there's other human beings that use the restroom. I can sit here and gripe and complain, or I can be a game, you know, a, ch a change maker and say, I, I've walked into this, I'm not happy with it, it's disgusting, it's repulsive, it's not my mess, I didn't create it, but if I want to lead by example, I got to make the change. So maybe take a few minutes, clean up the paper towels, you know, dry the sink a little bit, you know, and obviously you don't need to go get, a, you know, buy a toilet plunger and go straight clean in the toilets, but you know what I mean? Just whatever you can do in your capacity, if you're, you know, whatever time you have, just to make an improvement, a small improvement. This is showing Ihsan. It's saying, Allah, I found something unpleasant, unbecoming of, 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 of you know, of, of, of Muslims in Islam, and I want to change that. Um, so these are little small things that we can do, but that exhibit this beautiful concept in our faith. Right? Alhamdulillah. Any questions? Yes. Alhamdulillah. It's, I think the timing is perfect because we, uh, unless you have any questions, but I hope this was, you know, helpful to you. This three simple uh, concepts and really trying to, you know, apply them for all of us. This is advice for all of us in our every day, inshallah, and then forward, looking forward uh, also for Ramadan. Any, um, any questions, any comments? Um, yes, please. I mean, do you have any specific tips on how we can apply this during Ramadan? Sure, I mean, for prayer, of course, is uh, I think the most important kind of thing that we should be all really striving for, because we have 30 days, and they say, you know, habits are made in 40 days, right? So right now, until Ramadan, you have 40 uh, days. So we start right now, right, and you say, I want to really work on my prayer. So I'm going to, you know, if I need to, for example, wake up for Fajr and my alarm isn't working, I need to change it to my alarm, I need to buy another alarm, or I need to really just sleep early. Some of us are night owls and we wonder why we can't wake up for Fajr, maybe because we're up too late browsing the internet or watching Netflix or whatever we're doing, right? So we need to think about how the life adjustments we can make so that these excuses that, you know, kind of get in the way of our, um, you know, of, of, of us attaining these how, how we can uh, prevent them from happening. So, you know, just uh, prayer, I would say, would probably be the focus that I would say all of us can do because there's, you know, access and inshallah, uh, Edlin will be, you know, the p point person for this group. So what we can do is maybe create, I don't know, a mail uh, list or a WhatsApp group, whatever you advise. And if anybody here needs help with prayer, we can inshallah maybe arrange a buddy, you know, someone to really help um, with you with your prayer and maybe, you know, just share resources with you. The, the masjid here, I'm sure, has plenty of resources. But again, we'll facilitate that. But I would say prayer. And then, um, you know, there's other things too. Uh, bad habits, vices. You, you, we all know, you should by this age, at this point in our lives, we all know ourselves. We know our bad habits and really trying to examine them from a critical point. Not from a point of negativity and looking down at yourself, but again, uplifting yourself and saying, I have to be better and I want to be better. And I can, you know, Allah's made room for for um, for us to, to, to return and to, you know, to, to draw near Him no matter where we are. So I'm not going to let those negative thoughts get me down. I'm just going to do what I need to do. Okay, so, with a positive outlook, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, there is food for all of you. So we'll just end, inshallah, with a quick du'a. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal asr inna l'insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amlu salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Oh Allah, please bless this circle, bless every member here, bless the organizers of this masjid for creating this space for us, inshallah. And uh, bless our Ramadan, bless our families, inshallah, and guide them, open their hearts, ya Allah. Amen. Thank you.